Hi there, and thanks for tuning in for another episode of Math with Mullins. Today's notes are going to be labeled 9.3, Surface Area of Cylinder. After the video, you should have four things written in your notes. The first thing we're going to write is the formula for the surface area of cylinders, the steps that you'll do, one example of surface area of a cylinder, and one example of lateral surface area of cylinder. So just want to make sure we know the difference between just normal surface area and then lateral surface area. Let's go ahead and begin. What we're going to be looking at today are cylinders. So first we need to think about what does the surface area, what does the surface of a cylinder look like? The way we do that is we look at nets of different shapes. Nets are just a two-dimensional drawing, which means a flat drawing of the shape. So if you unrolled the can here to the right, you would notice that there would be a rectangle as the um, label. And then you would also have a circle for the top of the can and a circle for the bottom of the can. So you're essentially trying to find the area of two circles and the area of one rectangle. Keep in mind, whenever you unroll this circle, it's going to be the, not the area, but the circumference of the circle. So actually, one of these sides will be 2 pi r, which is the circumference of a circle, and the other side will be height. Let me show a little bit more of that in detail. This is where you're going to pause and copy this in your notes. While you're copying this in your notes, you can listen in, or if you want to, pause and then listen, you can. But notice that you have a few things. You have the words that describe surface area of a cylinder, so you're going to copy those. The actual algebra terms or the actual formula, this is really important for you to make sure that you know. And you also need to know what does the 2 pi r squared mean and what does the 2 pi r h mean. Make sure that you label each one of these so that we can go ahead and go forward and trying some questions. All right, next thing we're going to write in our notes are the steps. Make sure to go ahead and pause. Once you're done, let's go ahead and click play so you can see an example actually being done. Number one, we're going to write the formula. Step two, we'll plug in the numbers. And then step three, we'll be using the order of operations to solve. Here we're going to see me actually try a um, example. The first thing I'm going to do is step one, which is write the formula down. 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Remember, the 2 pi r squared represents the circles, the top and bottom, and the 2 pi r h represents the lateral surface area, so like the rectangle label that's wrapped around the can. Next thing I'm going to do is plug in the numbers that I have. 2 pi r squared is 6 squared plus 2 pi r is still 6 and h is 9. Next, you get to start solving using the order of operations. What I normally do is I focus on the numbers first and then go back and multiply it by pi. So we know that 6 squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. And then we also need to multiply that by 2. So 36 times 2 gives us 72. So the left side of the equation will be 72 pi. And then on the right side, I'm just going to do 2 times 6 times 9. That's going to give me 108. What I can do now is just add the 72 pi and the 108 pi. And I would get 180 pi. This would be our answer in terms of pi, but it says to round your answer to the nearest tenth. So what I'm going to do is this essentially means 180 times 3.14. We should get 565.2 yards squared. The next slide you're actually going to try on your own. If you need to, rewind this slide um, and re-look at the ways that we did that. 
but go ahead and look at the take the time to look at this example we're going to pause the video once you're done you can click play to see how this is going to turn out so first thing you're supposed to do is you should have written down your formula 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h <clears throat> next thing it was plugging in our numbers 2 pi times 3 squared because 3 is my radius and 2 pi times radius which is 3 times h which is 18 I know that 2 I'm going to be multiplying my 2 times 3 squared 3 squared I know is 9 and 9 times 2 is 18 so that'll be 18 pi on the left hand side sorry it should have been labeled these steps that's step 2 this will be step 3 solving in order of operations the next thing I'm going to do is 2 times 3, which is 6, and then 6 times this 18, which is the height, gives me 108, and that'll still be pi. Adding the pi's together, 108 plus 18 is going to be 126. Again, this would be our answer in terms of pi, but what I need to make sure that I do is round my answer to the nearest tenth. So that'll be 126 times 3.14. That should give you 395.64 centimeters squared. Since it says round to the nearest tenth, the six is in the tenth spot. So really your final answer rounded would be 395.6 centimeters squared. So there you have it. Make sure, how did you do on your example? Hopefully you did well. Next thing we're going to go back and look at is lateral surface area. In the beginning, when you wrote down this formula, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, you, you were able to label each part of the formula. These represent the bases or the circles, whereas this represents the lateral face. So really, to find the surface area of the lateral face, you will only use this portion of the formula. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in for us. 2 pi r h would be 2 times pi times 1, which is the radius, times 2, which is the height. Again, just multiplying the numbers first. 2 times 1 is 2, times 2 is 4. So that is 4 pi. We're going to put the um, answer in terms of pi, or not, sorry, not in terms of pi, but actually worked out. So I'm going to be doing 4 times pi, which is 3.14, and that's going to give us 12.56 inches squared. Okay, so with lateral surface area, you are only using the second half of the formula because the first half of the formula deals with the circles. We only need the lateral surface area, which is label. Think of lateral surface labels. Here's where you're going to pause the video and try this one on your own. Before you do, keep in mind, you're finding the lateral surface area, rounding to the nearest tenth, and also noticing too here, this is not the radius. So think about what you would have to do to the number eight to change it to the radius. Go ahead and pause, try on your own. Once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, so once again, the lateral surface area, we're only using 2 pi r h. That means I'm going to do 2 times pi. Radius is not 8. 8 is actually the diameter. The radius will be half of that, so that'll be the number 4. And then height will be 12.2. Again, I'm going to multiply just my numbers. 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 times 12.2 should have been 97.6. So that's my answer in terms of pi. But again, I want to round it to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to do 97.6 times 3.14. And that's going to give me this big number, 306.464 rounding it to the nearest tenth would look like this 306.5 millimeters squared just because the six is above the five and so that's going to change the neighbor four to the number five how did you do 
Again, feel free to rewind the video, go back to what you need to look at, but this is going to conclude our video on the surface area of cylinders. Just to double check, you need to have four things in your notes before you get started on homework. The formula, the steps, or solving in order of operations. Um, the third thing, making sure you have that one example correctly of uh, the surface area of a normal cylinder. And then the fourth thing is just that previous example we just did, the example of lateral surface area of a cylinder, which is just, remember, the label, the rectangle label. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Later.